if I go to an event, I want to be inspired. So I want to uh, meet people who create stuff, uh, people who, who are inspired and passionate about, the, passionate about what they are doing, actually. So it's not just uh, someone coming up and talking. But it, it should be come, come out of their hearts. It should be their passion, and they're striving for it. Those are the, those are the people you want to meet when you go to an tech event or in, in any other kind of event, even in art festival or anything. But uh, in this region, or may be, it, it, it must be the same in the world, but most of the time when you go to such events, you find only people talking bullshit. So these people, <laughs> yeah, you, there are a lot of ideas, like, so I've, I've been tracking all these tech events in Sri Lanka, and yeah, even in the region, uh, for last 10 years, it's the same bunch of people uh, coming up and talking, same, st same st uh, type of stuff every day. So some guys I know, for like last 10 years, they are talking on the same stuff, like, but still, nothing has become action, right? So they are still talking on the ideas. I don't believe in that because if if you have an idea, it should be a, become a reality. Like it should be an it should be activated. So you don't have to wait till a, that um, golden moment to come, uh, come and like yeah, give give you a bunch of money to go go ahead and execute your idea. You don't have to wait till that. But because today is you have a lot of opportunities. Like the internet, I mean, it creates enormous opportunity because personally I know because for myself every bit of success of my life happened through internet so that's because I didn't sit and wait till my ideas to get action because I worked on it so I expect to see the same type of people I should have. so when I go to uh, any events like uh, I, I want to make sure I leave I'll present something so that people uh, relieve the rooms in, inspired so at least they will it, it, should, it should give give them a hope like if this guy this average guy can do this I should be able to do it so that that's my idea so I everywhere I go like if I present I try to come up with something unique or something cool so others would be inspired by it it, it doesn't mean it's, it's, it's huge things but it's, it's small things you do in your life that it, it can create a lot of in a different ways, it can create awareness, and you know it, it, it could, could just explode. So, I mean, go go ahead. Don't just stick to your ideas and wait till the things happen. The golden moment arrives. Go ahead and work on your ideas. So you don't need to always be. So like, what happens is most of the people I mean, single we say cutting cutting batala kola ita So it you don't have to talk and wait, right? You have, you, you just create stuff, then come up and hit, come up and show. Because that, that's how we think should be. Like talking won't won't make, go take us anywhere. So that's my idea on that. So based on that, like I'm going to present something I've worked on recently. I've been working for the last one month on this. This is called Punch. How many of you all already have seen this? Or do you have any idea? A any of you? Okay. So two or three guys know. That's that's good. That's good. So actually, they are. I mean, there are people who, are, who like to see these stuff, so that's good. So punch is actually, a, you can, in a simple sense, if you tell, it's a static site generator. Uh, st static site generator means like you, it, it just outputs HTML. That's in the basic sense, that's it is. But uh, as I see, uh, punch is not just a static site generator. And you will also see why, why I'm saying so, because by the end of this presentation, you will see how much of cool stuff and you could do with Punch. So it's basically a micro framework for developing websites, I would say. So it's not just websites. It's a micro framework. You can tweak it. It's, it's just a tool. Like it, it's, it's like a wrench or a hammer. You can use it the way you want so to come up so more, to build something. So that's what Punch is. So you will get to know uh, in more detail what, what I mean by a tool so okay so you want to make a website right so what would how many of you have created your own websites actually have tried to create a website I, I mean not these tumblers and Facebook pages but a real website uh, okay that's cool so how was the process I mean how did you start like uh, how did you learn to create websites? So what was the first step you took? Uh, maybe like you, you might go to your friend and ask, yeah, Mashang, I need to create a website. Where should I start? 
then uh, people may say like, yeah, yeah, do you like you have if you want to create websites, you need to know. Sorry, I'm cussing on this. Okay, so if you want to create websites, uh, you need to know HTML and bit of CSS and some bit of JavaScript. Yeah, then you are good to go. If you know this stuff, you can create a website. That's what most of the people would tell you. So if you learned HTML, it was very simple. So it, it's, it, just, it was just beautiful. But why, why, why do you have to go this uh, extra mile and still uh, remain frustrated? Web, creating websites should be very easy. I mean, if you know H, your HTML, if you know your CSS, and if you know a bit of JavaScript to add the spice, you should be easily should be able to create a website very easy. Why 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 we should uh, have this all this trouble in creating a website? So this is not the way it should be. That's where the inspiration came to me. Like even I suffered through this process because to create a simple site, why do I have to spend a whole lot of time like, uh, time time on just tweaking this? Rubbish, right? So it should be there. Should be an easy way. So I I try to see what others has done, but then I see, didn't see what I had in mind. So I thought, why not I just build this, right? So that's the that's the start to punch. So it just came up. So punch to punch your websites, right? So punch is actually a tool written in Node.js. Do you know Node.js? It's a JavaScript engine runs on the server. Normally, JavaScript was traditionally you knew JavaScript runs on the client, but Node.js puts, puts it in the server. This creates a uh, lot of opportunities to do websites rather than we tradi traditionally did uh, on the site. So, but uh, for Punch, it's just uh, Node.js is uh, used as a as a, a system component, so it's not you. You know, you need not to know punch, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Node.js to create websites with Punch, but you need to install it on a system. It's very easy to install, actually. So it is available on all platforms. Um, even for Windows, there's a uh, version of Node.js, so you should be able to download and install Node.js. Then uh, Punch comes as a package. So in Node.js, there's a package management system called npm. You just need to install that as well, so you so you can install Punch, right? So after you have npm, you can run the command npm install Punch. That's simply that's it. So you will have Punch installed on your system, right? So Punch has this concept called this. It's built on this concept of convention over configuration. So you need not to worry about the configuration. So you see, uh, you saw with the cases like a Drupal or WordPress or uh, whatever the, the old school CMSs, you have to deal with a lot of configurations. So to get your site up and running, you need to uh, mingle with a lot of uh, configurations to get it right. But uh, in Punch, the concept is you need not to touch the configuration file as long as you are happy with the default. You need not to touch the configuration file. So leave it as it is. But it has the flexibility if you need to do something beyond what you ex uh, what the system pro uh, tool provides if you need something beyond that you then have the flexibility to change the configurations and extend the system the way you want so it follows the concept uh, convention over configuration and um, based on uh, beyond that like uh, there are two two main pillars or two main components in punch that's that's templates and the content so the, these are the two parts which carries the weight or are the core components of punch. So you have templates, then you have content. So once you have a template and once you have a content, you should be able to create an HTML page. Right? That's the underlying concept of punch. So you need not to worry about uh, a server-side language. You need not to uh, have a third party to integrate this. So you only need to know how to create a template in HTML and how to create content. If you know these two, you can create a website. That's that's how easy it is, right? So, for uh, uh, for templating, it goes with a default uh, default templating uh, language called Mustache. Nice pictures in this. That's in this. <laughs> I just looked at it. So, right, Mustache is uh, a, a new kind of a templating system or a templating language. Uh, Created by Chris Wansroth of GitHub, uh, it's logicless templates. When you want to 
uh, bold this uh, uh, this word three words like you uh, add two stars uh, at the beginning and two stars at the end that that will generate output like this see so it's an easy format to uh, write your content so it's very easy to write uh, i mean i also have an app on my phone so basically uh, when it comes to editing a site even i can edit on the phone so because it just uses the simple uh, uh, syntax which very 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 simple to understand and very easy to work with so must um, uh, sorry markdown is also supported by punch so it, the so you can have content in markdown and json format and you can have your templates in mustard so if you have these two you may be able to create a site so i hope so far it's it's uh, very simple as compared to the previous ones you saw so let's move on to see a demo right so i thought i said this as a coding session so you might wonder where are the demos so just a second yeah. here's an interesting thing i don't know how many of you recognize this earlier this slide show itself is created using punch right so it's a bit of a like it's 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 like a kind of an uh, after effect of i created this to uh, create websites and now i can create slide shows also so that's one of little conveniences of having do, uh, having a system like this so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, edit this con content on on, on the slide show so this is actually a JSON file which uh, holds the content for the slideshow. So I just, for, for each slide, there's an object. So I just change the title of the current slide. And now we should uh, gen generate our site again, site or the slides again. So I just run this command punch. Okay, see? So it uh, copied the certain files and rendered certain files. And now we, uh, we may move on to the browser. See what happened. Yeah, see? It changed the container in the slide. So that's that's how you can that's how easy it is. So if you want to change something on your website or even in this case like the presentation, like it's it's very simple. Like you need not to wait through H, uh, HTML or anything like you you have you have the direct access to the JSON file so you can basically edit it and also it's just one command away, like you just run punch and your site is ready. So it's very easy to uh, edit content or update content with punch. So that was a simple example. So let's see, let's dig deeper and see what really happens under the hood. So basically on a site, uh, there are templates. So in that case, like as we said, uh, we are having about mustache, a template in a mustache format and then uh, punch, when we run that punch command, you saw that it uh, generated output. So in, for each output, what it does is like it uh, fetches this template from the template directory. So it sees about mustache template and it fetches it. And then it goes to the content directory and starts, uh, start, starts looking at uh, the relevant content for that template. So in this case, for the about mustache template, it will un uh, understand this about JSON and the about JSON as uh, relevant content. And also if you create a directory, and the contains uh, by the same name as the template. So if you create about a directory on the contains, it will know uh, to uh, go, go, go under this directory and fetch the content available, whatever the content available there. So the content there can be, again, JSON or Markdown. So we have, for the about page, like we have a members.json and a overview.mustage. Uh, sorry, it should be Markdown. I made a mistake there. It should be Markdown. So sorry about that. So if you have that, uh, uh, when you run the punch command, it will go to the uh, public directory and output this file about HTML. That, that would be the output. So to do this, you need not to touch the, any of the configuration files. If you're happy with this, uh, you will be fine. So you need not to change any of the configurations so you can have the output uh, generated. So for each, uh, so each, if you create uh, then index dot stage, then contact us dot mustache or like that so the basic pages or whatever the uh, pages you have on your site and run the punch command you will have the output ready okay it's uh, so that's the core of punch so that's what that's what a static site generator means but actually in the uh, in the reality there are several other neat features on punch uh, for example if you have a website and if you uh, have a twitter 
feed uh, displayed on the page or else you show the Facebook fan, fans you have for your uh, site. You want to render these kind of blocks, so, but these blocks uh, updates dynamically. So on every refresh, it, it would change. So there should be a way to render this content. But one of the disadvantages you would think, like if you create a static site, you won't be able to uh, render dynamic content. So there's a way around for this. Uh, actually, this comes as a, a benefit of using JavaScript to, uh, for punch uh, rendering, actually. So as I said earlier, JavaScript uh, can be run on both the uh, server and the client. So if you, uh, uh, if you want to render content again on the client, it's, it is possible to use the same renderer in the uh, server, which we, or server or your local machine, if the correct term would be your local machine. So the same uh, renderer you used on your local machine uh, can be used on the client side as well to render different content. So this is a nice little advantage uh, that comes with Punch because it's been written with uh, Node.js or uh, JavaScript. So let's see an example of what this means. I want to, actually I want to render a uh, block uh, which shows the GitHub watchers for the Punch project. Uh, it's, it's hosted on GitHub, so there are watchers. Everything. It's like the Twitter followers, it's increasing. So I want to render a block uh, in, in, in the slide itself, which shows the uh, Twitter, uh, sorry, the GitHub watchers for the Punch project. So let's uh, move. I have a okay, I have a script.js file here uh, is it clear I'm not sure is it clear for the back uh, okay so the uh, here we, uh, you see uh, we are render, rendering the uh, content on the client side. For that, uh, we are calling, uh, we are in, in, instantiating a new ins, uh, ins, uh, new uh, punch renderer instance. So that's the renderer which is uh, going to run on the client. Uh, so uh, the renderer it actually works asynchronously. Uh, what do you mean by synchronous? Is like it doesn't uh, blocks the process, so it, it won't wait till all the content is uh, available. It won't block the process. It would uh, uh, try to uh, Render when uh, whenever the content is available. So uh, your, you can call your template, and then you can call to uh, uh, call to fetch the content, and then you may not, uh, want to also uh, uh, get the, some partials for the rendering. So you uh, and for these, like you can uh, for the render, you can call this function set uh, template or set partials or set content. So in this case, uh, what is most interesting is the set, uh, set template method for set template method, we directly gives the template we want to render. But uh, as you can see at the bottom, there you would see a, a jQuery function dollar dot get JSON. So that function means uh, we, we are initiating an Ajax request, uh, requesting a JSON output. So uh, this, uh, this time, so I, I was not sure whether the internet connection would work, so I added a local host here. But let's change that to the real request. So, so we are initiating a call to api.github.com, uh, which is the GitHub, uh, GitHub's API endpoint. So it would uh, give me an output uh, in, the J in the JSON format of uh, the follower, uh, followers or the watchers for my repository. So this is an Ajax uh, request. So. Yeah, uh, we, we cannot be certain at what time uh, we would get the response. So uh, for that, we issue a callback. Uh, so when, when, whenever the content is ready on the browser, render uh, pass this content to renderer. So renderer actually uh, goes to sleep, or else it just uh, gives the loop back to some, something else to proceed. So once the content is given, so it just looks for whether the template is there, then the whether the content is there and the whether the partials are there. So if all three is available, it would do the rendering job. So one, uh, one, once it uh, does the rendering, uh, we can 
also uh, pass in another call back. So a call after end. So here you see, see that. So in the after end call back, we can see what we, sh uh, what we should do uh, to the content uh, or the output. So I'm saying here, uh, open this, uh, open this, or set, set as the, set this content, uh, set this content as the HTML or the uh, or just append it to the Git, uh, GitHub widget call the, the element called GitHub widget. So this ID is GitHub widget. So find that element and append that content to it. Okay, so that's what I'm saying there. So let's put this into our slides and see what happens. I have the necessary scripts here listed. So. So I'm calling templates directory. So it's different from the original template directory. So we have a template directory called alternate templates. So I'm now using that template directory to generate this site. So I also set the output from the default public to alternate public. Okay. So now I'm going to run punch command with our newly created configuration. Right, so let's see what happened. Here you will see that uh, we have a new directory called alternate public. So this, uh, this contains the uh, site with the alternate, uh, rendered with the alternate template. Um, let's run that site and see what happens. So uh, yeah, it, it, it seems like the Python is giving some trouble. So this, ah, it's so it's bad. So okay, let's see. Okay, now you would see, rather than our default white background, now we have the content in a black background. So that's just a simple configuration change we did, and we now have a different template rendering the content. So it's possible to uh, generate sites with different templates and different configs uh, con uh, contain so it's, it's just you need to create uh, different configuration files okay so that's one of uh, another neat advantages of using punch let's move back to our original slide okay so uh, I said originally punch can be used to create websites but that's not the truth uh, it's actually possible to do many things with Punch. Uh, like you can use it for use it as a code generator. So you have a project, uh, maybe a web app project or something uh, with the different uh, files like Java or something. So, but you need to come up with a template for your project. So you can create a code generator with Punch. That's one of the possibilities because must, uh, you can use a mustache template to output not HTML but a different type of file. So that's possible and. Uh, it's, it can be used as a simple tool to create HTML mockups. So you may want to uh, present your project to a client, but you, your content is full, uh, not uh, ready, fully not ready. So you may have certain blocks as images and certain blocks of HTML. So you can use the partials feature in Punch to create your uh, site or the mockups and present to the client. So that's one of the possibilities. So it, it's actually yesterday I, I also uh, got to know this because one of the users uh, notified me like he's using this to create uh, HTML mockups. It works awesomely. So that's one of the neat features. Apart from that, like you can use it as a wiki or else uh, API documentation for API documentation for your project. So this is possible because it uh, resides on your local machine. So if you use something like Git to version control, so within a team you can manage a wiki without needing to 
have a the whole uh, setup of a system. So you can simply work on the fi files available on your local machine to create something like a wiki or a API documentation. So that's also possible with Punch. And also, a little, little bit ambitious, but it's possible. Uh, you can generate books or academic papers or other kind of large text because uh, if you can output an HTML, it's possible from uh, if, if it's possible to uh, go beyond that and convert it to a PDF for uh, whatever the output format or for a book or eMobi e or ePub or Mobi or something like that. So it's possible to do projects like books or academic papers with Punch. And of course, uh, as I as I'm showing in this presentation itself, so you can create presentations with Punch. That's also a neat feature, right? So. Punch is just seven days old. I mean, it, I've been working on it for like last month, one, but uh, it was released, uh, released only last week. So I, I, exactly last uh, Thursday, I made the blog post about Punch. And so far, let's see how the reactions are like. So we have already 150 watchers in GitHub, which is uh, kind of, I, I feel like it, it's, uh, it's flattering of actually so, to see so many people getting interested on the project. So. And it, it was twice on Hacker News homepage. So it, uh, on, on the day that it, day it was launched, and also, again, beginning of this week, it was on Hacker News. So there, there was also a lot of discussion on this project, a lot of people showing love and even the hate. So that's, that's how it is. So it's, it's been on the Hacker News. So there are seven folks already. So people all already working with Punch, uh, extending it to their uh, requirements. So that's really amazing to see people already uh, working on it. And there, there are also four pull requests. So people has not only forked it and worked on it, but they also sent, uh, sent me a pull request saying in, in, integrate this feature back to Punch. So or there are already four pull requests. So that's kind of awesome. And last, like I have already listed two copy invites as well. So <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So we are, right, we are, with Punch we are winning. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> right. So what's next? So is, is Punch a, it's a programming language or it's a framework. <laughs> it's it's sort of it's you, you do in, it's it's not actually programming. You need not to do any programming because only programming you do is HTML pro, uh, the but you are writing HTML. That's all you need to do and to contain editing, you just need to understand the JSON and the Markdown formats and follow that format to edit your content. So, I think the, both these uh, bo both these are not you cannot call this as real programming. Just just you follow format and enter data. So, it's possible to use as as it is like that. So, if it's not a programming, uh, you need not to know programming. That's the core idea of it. Like if you know the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you should be able to use Punch. Tell you you have a variable. It, uh, just you need to. Remember is that you need to use uh, two parentheses uh, to uh, in, in encapsulate that variable. So that's that's only that. And also talking about JSON, I I don't think it's really hard to grasp it. Like it's just you need to if you know a bit of JavaScript, you already know the syntax. So it's just uh, you need to know about array and a, a object what that those are like. So if you know that structure, you can uh, lay the content like that. So. It's not. Uh, it's, it's just if you know the key value pairs. That's that's about it. So it's not a little bit more complicated than a simple key value uh, pairs. But if you have the uh, parentheses and like that. But still, it's simple. I mean, uh, compared to learning uh, something like because PHP kind of things, it helps if you want to. Yeah, if you want, if sure you want to learn a programming language, if you want to build a web application. So what I target here is for the average users. So if you want to create a site for your business or you have something uh, ongoing, it's, it's not your, your, your career shouldn't be on web development. So you want to do a site without uh, spend, uh, spending on that. Like you want to create a site by yourself. Like it's, it could be a simple site. So you need not to worry a lot on learning PHP or stuff like that. You can easily come up with the site. That's the concept. So hope I answered your question. Okay. 